Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of August 23rd, 2021. This week we got four topics, and the first one is a drone used by PG&E, which is an electric company in California, is under scrutiny because of a possible relationship, I'm going to say, with the Dixie Fire that's going on in California right now. So we'll talk about that. Uh, something not necessarily drone related, but DJI related, and uh, DJI has a new Osmo, it looks like, around the corner. There were some leaked photos, and we're going to talk about that. There were two airplane collisions. One was confirmed, the second one, we're still waiting for more information. Uh, two drone collisions with an airplane, and so we're going to talk about what happened there. And then the last one is drones being used for good to locate missing persons. So let's get to it. First story this week is an interesting one coming out of California. And um, you may not be familiar, or maybe you are. There's a, a fire going on in California right now called the Dixie Fire. Uh, it's burned over 700,000 acres at the moment. And Butte County, which is where the fire is located, is currently investigating reports that there was a drone that interfered with firefighting operation during the first few hours of the Dixie Fire. So, as you know, if drones are being flown during a fire, then all uh, operation have to stop. The county is accusing PG&E, which is the electrical company that's been in hot waters for quite a while now with the fires in California, and they're accusing them of both starting the fire and also flying the drone that caused the air attack to stop operation and as a result caused this fire to grow and grow and grow to be basically uncontrollable. So. PG&E denies that they had a drone in the area at the time and the judge said that there was information that was given to the court that stated that a PG&E contra contractor, not somebody directly from PG&E, but they hire, I'm sure, people to do their drone flights, uh, that may have been undertaking a flight at the time when the fire started. Now. They're asking PG&E to find out, which I, I think is kind of an interesting thing, um, asking the company to find out if something was really happening instead of uh, the judge and, and the, the county having to prove that PG&E was actually flying the drone. Now, interestingly, the drone was reported to have been flying within the first three hours of when the flight was happening, which is, you know, Typically, a TFR is not going to be put in place. We're, we're, I'm talking about TFRs because uh, this is something that, you know, the drone wouldn't be flying during a TFR, theoretically, but uh, if somebody was flying the drone before the TFR, technically it could somewhat be legal. Now, it's a really interesting thing. We looked for TFRs, couldn't find any TFRs that were uh, put in place during that time for that fire. So. I'm sure we'll hear more about this. I, I think it's a really interesting situation. Uh, hopefully neither PG&E started the fire or was the one flying that prevented the firefighters from, from flying. But I live in an area where we have a lot of fires, uh, forest fires, and, and it can be devastating to communities and everything. And, and we always want to make sure that we're not flying drones when this happens, TFR or not. If there's a forest fire, just stay away from it. Okay, next story is DJI as a looks like a new Osmo coming up. Now, if you're not familiar with the Osmo, the Osmo has changed quite a bit over the years. The original Osmo was designed as kind of a, a, a handheld, a little stick with a camera on top of it. And this was uh, an interesting design because at the time they were using the same camera that was being used on the Inspire one, which was the X3 and the X5. Uh, DJI had created somewhat of a, uh, a similar version called the Z3, and then you could use these on the Osmo handle. So it was just a stick. Actually, I've, I've been using one for years and I still use it because uh, it had this additional Z axis component, which is a, a mechanical arm that helps with preventing motion up and down. And I always thought it was really interesting and that's how you could get the best possible uh, walking videos without getting this uh, up and down motion that you get when you start walking with the camera. Even if you're good at doing the ninja walk, I call it, a lot of people call it that, um, it's still very hard to, to not get this little bump uh, during, the, um, during the thing. I stopped using the original Osmo camera that came with it and I actually rigged mine to have uh, a stabilization on top of it, an additional stabilization on top of it where you can put a GoPro or any kind of, of additional cameras that you want and, and it works awesome. So mine is super rigged, it looks like a homemade device but it's it's the, the best smoothest stabilization I've ever been able to get on a handheld camera on the ground. Now with that being said, this new Osmo kind of looks like it's using the same principle, using a Z axis in there, but also using a three axis camera 
on top of it and it looks like the camera is something like an X7. It's a, it's a large camera. The X7 is what you find on the Inspire 2 uh, at the moment. It's a super 35 millimeter uh, sensor which is a large image. I think the X7 is 6K. Uh, it looks like based on what Drone Excel is reporting that this might be an 8K camera. Um, it's got handles on the side, it's got a zoom wheel on the side as well and it looks like you can add a bunch of different um, uh, accessories on top of it. So I'm actually kind of excited this is a run and gun type of camera. This is something that we actually use a lot when we create our videos and, uh, and this is something that would fit really well in our gear. So I wanted to talk about this because I, I think this is a, a, a different design than you know any other cameras that we've seen out there and I think it would look really cool. So next thing. Two things this week, two uh, airplane collisions, uh, airplane drone collisions. The first one was in Canada. This happened in Toronto. Uh, a Cessna 172 that was doing a training flight hit a Matrice 210 from the Canadian police. And what happened is that um, well, the drone was completely destroyed, but there was substantial damage done to the aircraft. And you can see the pictures here of the nose of the aircraft. It looks like the Matrice hit the nose and the propeller. Um, anytime you have a propeller hit like this, it's going to be a, an engine overhaul for the Cessna. Um, the NAV Canada, which is the, the country's air navigation service provider, kind of like a, a, a LANS type of provider, said that they were not notified about the flight, about the drone flight. I'm not 100% certain of how the rules work in Canada, but my guess is that they have the same thing where uh, drones have to give way to manned aircraft traffic. So in this case, it looks like the police has some uh, egg on their face by uh, flying this drone without getting approval from what the reports have been and from flying really close to where airplanes may be. So uh, it'll be interesting to see if we hear more about um, kind of the details of what happened and, uh, and who was at fault in this case. But um, <laughs> bottom line is, Obviously, don't fly your drone near other aircraft, and if you do, make sure that uh, you stay away from, uh, from manned aircraft. There was a second drone airplane collision that was reported. Now, in this case, we don't have the proof that it actually happened, but after listening to the audio, I found very interesting. This is, a, this is an Envoy air flight that was out of, Detroit, uh, out of uh, Chicago to Detroit. They took off and then they reported hitting a drone at 2,500 feet after takeoff. Now, what's interesting is that Unlike other reports that we usually see, air traffic control was actually talking on the radio before that happened about the fact that there was a drone that was spotted by other aircraft in the area and, and they asked, have you seen a drone? They were asking them about the position and they said, yeah, I think we just hit it. And then they basically came back, they found some damage. I don't think they found a drone just yet. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what the FAA says and the NTSB after they do a, a further investigation and find out if this was indeed a drone. Um, I saw a report on one of the articles that said it was actually a balloon, um, but um, they, they said the FAA said it was a balloon. I could not find anything from the FAA officially saying that it was a balloon. So I'm going to be on the cautious side right here. Uh, the fact that air traffic control actually reported a drone in the area and then that the aircraft said that they hit it uh, to me is a good indication that this could be a, a real drone collision uh, in flight. Next. Okay, the last story this week is a drone that helped locate a missing person. Now, this happened in Des Moines River on Sunday evening. Uh, a group of kayakers went to do their own thing, and then uh, an 18-year-old on the kayak got separated from the group. Uh, it looks like alcohol was involved. It looks like uh, the kayakers were drinking, and then they reported the person missing. An off-duty police officer that was actually certified to fly located the missing person using a thermal drone. Uh, that happened late in the evening. The person was uh, found apparently heavily intoxicated and uh, but otherwise unarmed. So uh, thanks for using drones to save people. That's uh, another really cool thing. Uh, drones, drones doing good things. All right, that's all I have for you this week. Like, subscribe, comment, and uh, I'll see you guys next week.